creators, the other David here from ProductionCrate.com. Always wanted to say that. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to import 3D models and get them looking good inside of Blender 3D. And I'll be using some of the beautiful models from RenderCrate to do this. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is download a model from RenderCrate.com or wherever you get your 3D models. There are tons of great options on the site, but I'm going to start with this lovely computer tower model. Once you download your model, we're going to need to unzip it. If you have the Production Crate Connect Chrome extension, then it will automatically be organized into a folder depending on its category. If you don't, then it'll just be in your downloads folder. Once you've gotten it unzipped, you'll have an OBJ model and a textures folder. Make sure you remember where that's saved. Now, we're going to open up Blender 3D. If you don't have it already, you can download the latest version from the website, blender.org. Once you've got Blender opened up, you'll be greeted by a beautiful default cube. We aren't going to be needing that for this tutorial, so delete it by pressing X. Then, go up to File, Import, .obj, and navigate to wherever you saved the model, and double click on it. With some of the larger models, it'll take a minute to import, and Blender might even start to crash. That, that's fine, just give it a minute. Sometimes it's nice to just have a minute to sit and think about your life. You know, every single decision you've made has led you up to this moment. Are you happy with your life? And that's it! Now your model's inside a blender and we're done. But wait, something's wrong. When we go into the rendered view, the model looks super bad. And that's because the material isn't set up properly. In order to look at the material settings, go over to the side and click on the materials tab, marked with this cute little ball. Here we can see a preview of our material, see all the information about it, and access different materials if there are multiple. Select your material, then go to the upper right corner and drag out to create another panel, and change it to the shader editor. Welcome to the wonderful world of Blender Material Nodes. These are how you control how your material looks and reacts to light in its environment. When you've imported your model, it'll automatically come with some nodes. I'm going to delete all of these for now, except for the principal node and the material output. The material output node is pretty self-explanatory. It's taking all of the material information from the node tree and putting it into the mesh. The principal node is controlling all of the material's different properties, like its roughness and its color. To make our material look right, we're going to need to make all these settings match how the object is supposed to look in the real world, which is much easier than it sounds. Remember when we unzipped the model and there was a folder called Maps or Textures? Well now it's time to use those! Press Shift A and hit Search, then type in Image to add an Image Texture node. This node allows us to use images inside of the node editor. Hit the folder icon and find the Textures folder. Depending on the model you've downloaded, you will have a number of different textures, but every model will have either a diffuse, albedo, or color texture. Double click on that, and now it's inside of the image texture node. This controls the colors of the model, so we want to connect that to the base color input of the principled node. Next, we need to either add a new image texture node or duplicate the existing one with Shift D. Then, go back into the image selector and find the roughness or glossy map. Now, this is one of my favorites. What this one does is it controls what parts of the mesh are reflective and which parts are matte or rough. With a roughness texture, the dark parts will be reflective and the white parts will be rough. And with a glossy texture, it's the exact opposite. The principled node wants a roughness input, so if the model you're using has a glossy texture, like this one, we're going to need to invert it. To do that, press Shift A and add in an invert node, then put it between the image and the principled nodes. Look at that! Our model is already looking much better now that it's reflecting the environment around it. But there's more we can do. Let's duplicate the image texture node again and go back to the maps folder, then double click on our height or normal map. Now this is a fun one. What this does is control the small bumps and indents on the model that are too small to realistically model but still give us that nice detail we want in our renders. So how do we convert this map into something we can plug into the principled node? <laughs> well that's a fantastic question, thanks for asking. To use the height or normal map, we'll need to hit Shift A and add in a bump node. Now, we want to put our image node's output into the height input of the bump node, and it'll give us this nice little bump. Look at that, it's the Production Crate logo! Now we just take the output and put it into the normal input of our principal node. And look at that, we can see all these nice little bumps. You can control how strong they are by adjusting the strength value on the bump node. Pretty much any model that you download will have those three textures, but some models will have some other special textures. For example, this computer has a specular texture. What this does is control how shiny or glossy your model is. And to use it, you just hook it up to the principal specular input. Wow! It's so much shinier, just like a real computer! And look at how much nicer our model looks now that it has proper textures. Now, 
There are a few other texture maps you might encounter. On the drone model, we get this funny mission map. There are two ways to use this one. The first is to take the emission map and hook it up to the principal node's emission input. This will make the parts of the model that are supposed to emit light, emit light! Look at how cool that is! To adjust how strong or bright it is, you can adjust the strength slider. If you want a little more control over the emission, you can take this emission map and run it through a color ramp to brighten it up. Then use that as the factor input for a mix node, and mix the principal node with a regular emission node. Now you have total control over the color of the emissive parts, and how strong they are. You might also come across a displacement texture. These are similar to the height in normal maps, and can be used in the same way. However, they can also be used more directly. Add in a displacement node and connect the displacement map to the height input. Now you can hook it up to the material output's displacement input, and look at that! Looks like you just got out of the pool! To decrease the strength, lower the mid-level. This can also be used in the principal node's normal input, but works better using the material output node. And in cycles, you can make it so it displaces the mesh itself. Now, some of the models on the site are a bit more interesting. Take, for example, this beautiful alien creature. This handsome little lad comes with a .fbx as well as a .obj. To import the fbx file, go up to File, Import, fbx, and navigate to wherever you had it saved. Once you get that bad boy imported, you can see that it came with something special. A rig! That's right, some of the models on Production Crate are rigged. That means you can use the bones inside of Blender to move the model around and create animations. You can also import them to Mixamo and use that to animate them. Chris has a fantastic tutorial on how to use Mixamo for animation, and it translates over pretty well to Blender. Once you're done in Mixamo, you can import the model back into Blender as an FBX, and the materials work the same way. Look at his little dance! If you have any issues with materials, let me know in the comments below, and I or another creator will be happy to help you. If you want any more Blender tutorials, please let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to know what you thought of this one. And remember, make it awesome.